What is going on all you phenomenal human beings who are worthy of love? It is me, Dr. Reed, giving you what you need, aka Laguadio, which means he is a good man in Oneida. Hope you're doing well. Invitation, not an obligation, but if you want to, sit up nice and tall, taking the deepest breath of love you had all day, breathing like you love yourself, breathing in some love. Exhale some love. Welcome to week 10, people. You all are doing phenomenal so far. Loving all the discussions. Appreciate the peacemaking circles as we're putting our minds together. So be it in our minds, as we say in Oneida. Really grateful for each and every one of you. Right now, we are going to week 10. Beach board here. Here is the, we're gonna, I'm going to look at the reading here in a moment. Here's a list of videos. You can click on this link. It'll take you to the first one. You can go ahead and watch through the series there. And then I'm curious your thoughts. So just your takeaways. Again, the name of the game. You're putting your response of at least three to seven sentences or 30 second to a minute long video. And then you're reading at least three other people's. Feel free to leave a response. Feel free to read other people's as well, too. You don't have to just stop at three as well. But just that accountability that your work is being shared and looked at and reviewed. And then also this notion of just uh, trying to put our minds together and better ourselves, that there's many things that you know that I don't know and vice versa, that we can all learn from one another, learn together. The readings for next week as well, too from a, a glimpse of what we're talking about, another Dr. Karenga article as well too. And uh, this article here by Ella Walla, Pulling the Trigger, the Dehumanization of African-Americans and Police Violence, which we'll be taking a look at for next week. But looking at, look at take a look at these videos for this week as well too. The, the topic here is the myth of the model minority, how some people might think, oh, that sounds like it's a positive thing. Um, re in reality, the idea is that a model minority, it's even just by definition alone, you're, you're pitting other ethnicities against one another, saying by definition saying, oh, well, this is the model minority, so therefore other people should be acting, behaving in a certain way. So it's, uh, it's divisive, and then it pits different people against one another. Um, also, as it points out in the article as well too, it's, uh, it's you're putting on this expectate, this pressure to be perfect, which we know as human beings is impossible. So you're literally asking someone to do something which is impossible. So imagine what that's like for someone's psychological well-being, your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual being, when people are being put up on a pedestal for uh, of perfection. Uh, one, and also if, if you are not that way, how does that feel? How does it make people feel if you don't fit into that category? And then also think about how that undermines somebody's hard work and success for that person to get to where they were just for people to try to just say that it's, oh, it's only because of someone's ethnicity, which really undermines and undervalues all the hard work that person had done to accomplish what they have as well too. So the divisive nature of it, we talk again to get that word about minority and how really when we talk, when we look about uh, people who comprise the Asian American Pacific Island community in the world, right? You're looking at people who comprise Asia is roughly 1.7 billion people, India roughly 1.4 billion. Now here in the United States, that number's I've seen from anywhere from like 336 to 367, somewhere around 367 million. Um, so significantly less, and yet people we continue to call different AAPI people, you know, minorities, when in actually they're the majority of population. Um, and so we think about that, even in the state of California, how people of different ethnicities um, are the majority in terms of over uh, European American counterparts, uh, yet these people from different ethnicities are still referred to as minority. At the same when we perpetuate that language, we are perpetuating modes of domination as well, too. It's like, why do we say that if it, these people are indeed not the minority? Um, so just being mindful of our language, precision in our words and different things. So uh, take a look at that as well, too. And then you saw the videos you're going to watch. Just taking a quick look at the syllabus for the rest of the semester as well, too, just for some things to keep an eye out for as well, too. We're going to be watching next week the film uh, the 13th and look, taking a look at some other some other films as well too, some heavy topics, but um, just important ones as, as we look for accountability and looking for a change in our current system of where we are at. And um, just some different topics we're going to cover in the future. Look at that fall break from November 21st to November 25th. Uh, your infographic or social media posts. I just want to clarify this one here as well too. So it's anywhere from one page minimum to 10 pages. And this could be an actual social media post. So if you wanted to do a slide like an Instagram or a TikTok or something of that nature. Um, it could be on your actual account. It could be on an account that you create just for this assignment. It could be using Photoshop or a similar device or a similar method to make it look like it's a social media post, but it's not actually a social media post. If you're savvy and tech savvy and creative and <laughs> intelligent in that regards, um, if you want to keep it simple, you can open up Microsoft Word. You could use pictures from Google Images, and it doesn't have to be encompassing of everything you've learned this semester. It could be about one thing. It could be about two or three, just a few things. It could be a collage of an, a myriad of a number of 
uh, various different things that we've talked about throughout the semester. Um, or you can talk about something we have not talked about at all yet, but it relates to the class. It relates to the history, culture, contemporary issues of different ethnic groups that comprise here in the United States. So I'm, I'm curious about what you have there. Again, creativity is key. I've seen some people draw and paint these things as well too. I've seen people um, incorporate different things. Again, it's a one page. It could be an infographic. And if you go to canva.com, Canva, Dot com. They have different templates to create an infographic. If you don't know what that is, it's like it has like minimalist images and then it has some words alongside it to kind of describe what the topic, what the idea is trying to say. That's one way of doing it as well too. So um, you can create a video anywhere from, um, I think we're trying to shoot for about one minute long for, for videos or so. If you're doing that, you can um, um, always go longer if you need to, but one minute is what we're looking for for this assignment. And then, yeah, it could be anywhere from one to 10 slides. So if you have any questions about that, do let me know. Creativity is key. What if my assignment doesn't look like someone else's? Then that is great. You're unique. What if my assignment looks like everyone else's? Then that's great. Triangulation of data. And those are some similar ideas uh, that you're sharing, uh, but there's no one more you were than you. So I want to hear what you have to share. Your experience is unique. Again, as we say in Oneida, let's put our minds together. So be it in our minds. There's a great deal of information you know that I don't know. So I'm looking forward to learning together and to putting our minds together. And then also that final exam, it is going to be a two minute, so it says two to three minute here, just gonna say a two minute um, oral presentation of up to three concepts learned in the class, different than the concepts mentioned by the student during your midterm exam. So I know before that was a, an option for like a paper as well too, but for this one, it's just I want everyone to get your voice into space. It could be a podcast style, so you could do just your voice recording. It could be a video, you could use a PowerPoint. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, but I want you to get, I just want it to, to be able to articulate those things. And I know when you're oftentimes throughout your lives, people might ask you, oh, what are you taking and for your classes and what did you learn? And this two minute window, this elevator pitch, if you will, to be able to talk about, these are the things I've learned. These are things that are important to me. These are things that resonated with me. Maybe it's things that relate to your career, whatever your career is, whether you're in science or rocket scientist or biomedical engineering or engineering, or into TV production or media or whatever it is. Maybe, how is this gonna to relate to your career? What, how is this something you're passionate about? But I wanna make the connections. If you're curious about it, I'm curious about it. I wanna learn about it. You're passionate about it. It's gonna make me wanna be passionate about it as well too. Uh, the final reflection paper, again, this one is due uh, on that final exam day, which is gonna be on Monday, December 12th before 11.59 PM. And it's talking about your own ethnic experience in the United States. It's one to two page double space paper. Um, everybody has a story and I've talked about myself. I'm, I'm Oneida, I'm a dual citizen uh, of the Oneida nation in the United States of America. I'm also English American, Irish American and German American. You know, each with very different stories of people who how they came to this country, each with own different unique heritages and languages, uh, cultures and different things as well too. Um, so it's um, each, each and every, each and every one of you has a story and maybe some of you don't have that opportunity and the benefit of knowing your family's history. Maybe you don't have any people who are still with you in your family um, and it's just you. So if that's the case, then um, please, then you are, again, you are the expert of you. So please tell us about your experiences, your ideas, your observations of what that is like for yourself. Um, and if you do have that opportunity to have any relatives who are still with us, then feel free to try to ask. Maybe you're learning something new. Maybe you're compiling data and information for the first time that your family has not done before. Or maybe this has already been done before and you're expanding upon it as you stand on the shoulders of giants. So whatever that is, I look forward to you telling your story. And as you reflect on that, and as kind of taking on what we've learned about the class, as we think about history, culture, contemporary issues, what does that mean for yourself um, and your family's contribution? As we engage in what Dr. Malana Karenga would talk about, is this positive ethnocentrism, being rooted in our, in our own identity and heritage, but not viewing ourselves any, any better, any worse than anyone else, but engaging in mutual reciprocity, engaging this mutual exchange of respect and sharing. Uh, to create that more just and equitable society that we want to live in. And um, as Chief Oren Lyons would say, for seven generations to come. And that's not just a fancy, nice thing to say, but that, that, is, a, that is a duty, that is a responsibility, that is an inst instruction on how to live, not to make decisions for ourselves or our families or for this generation, but for seven generations to come. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me. I look forward to, to being in contact with each and every one of you. You, each and every one of you are human beings who are worthy of love. So impressed with all the work y'all are doing, the discussions. And there's just a couple people who have just uh, maybe missed a week or so, a week or a few throughout there. So be sure to catch up. And I just wanted to, again, invitation, not an obligation, but sit up nice and tall. 
Breathing in some love like you love yourself. Exhale some love. As you are love, you are worthy of love. I just wanted to say yawanko, kanalunkwa, and nugiwa means thank you. I love you. Until next time in Oneida. Thank you all so much, very much for everybody. Go Ramakakat. Thanks in Irish. Danke Shane. Thanks in German. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Take care, everybody.